Hey guys, Horror Junkies of Utah coming at you today to talk about Fear the Walking Dead Episode 2, which aired last Sunday. I got Craig here with me. Hello. And I am Marcus. And let's just jump into it. Craig, what were your uh, overall impressions of the second episode of Fear the Walking Dead? Pretty much the same as the first. Uh, wasn't all that impressed. Did you notice how, like, it, it felt like this the second episode was, like, half hour long, you know? You know, it felt really short. Yeah, it did. Um, I know the first episode was an hour and a half, but, hour still, and a half, but and still, it felt really sh fast. Yeah, and the second episode was, you know, your standard hour, um, and I didn't, I felt like I was watching more commercials than anything, mm -hmm. but who knows, I might just already be... Yeah. set in this mindset of I hate this thing and I think it's a cash crop but mm -hmm. I didn't notice um well I did notice that it was just very uh short you know I felt like I was watching a 20 minute episode yeah be interesting to go back in time and see how much time was actually dedicated towards commercials but for you you felt that the actual episode played out kind of like the first yeah i mean it wasn't quite so monotonous but uh i just didn't feel like a whole lot was going on you know everybody's like whenever you say stuff like this everybody's dogging on you oh dude they're just developing your characters they're just getting things started but it, they just don't get it they're like walking the walking dead does a good job of developing the characters and everything with like a story behind it and where, actually making it interesting yeah whereas this one it still isn't grabbing me i think like we have a ton of character development with no story development i feel like and none of the characters are are really developing either and they I don't, don't and they're not likable either you uh, got you got mr juggy guy who brings nothing to the story you got a little miss bratty teenager that you want to punch in the face <laughs> and uh the mom is kind of i don't know and then well let's let's talk about them real quick then let's talk about the characters so we got kim dickens playing madison clark who is the mother in the series what do you get from her character just, just your mom. Just, just, just typical just, mom. Yeah, she's a teacher, right? If I remember right. Yeah, she's, just, she's she's a teacher. A teacher, and, uh, or she's like a hall monitor. I don't, I don't know. I don't understand. She works at the school, but um, all I get from it is Craig thinks she's hot. <laughs> I admit she's pretty good looking. Probably the only thing I like about the show so far is she's easy on the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then we got Alicia Carey. I might be pronouncing the first name wrong, and she's playing. Um, Alicia Clark in the movie. The daughter of Madison. And exactly, the daughter. Her character, I don't think, has gone anywhere so far. She hasn't even had that much screen time, so I have, I can't she's, really judge. She's um, just a teenage girl for now. That's all we know about her. <laughs> and going back to Kim Dickinson real quick, she's known for Gone Girl. She was in Hollow Man. She's in Deadwood. She's in... Uh, a lot of famous stuff, and I didn't even know who she was at first. And then with the girl playing Alex Clark, she's in Into the Storm. And then we got Cliff Curtis. And this is funny because me and Craig were actually talking about this before we made the episode. We're like, man, he doesn't look familiar at all. And then, then Craig's like, yeah, he's in Live Free, Die Hard. I'm like, yeah, you're right. He's in that. Manawa. Um, basically, Kim Dickens or Madison Clark's. I don't know if they're married I think in they're the just series boyfriend or their boyfriend or girlfriend. But he is living with her and the kids. And he is for sure a teacher at the school. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think she is a like hall monitor or, or like a uh, therapist or something. But he is for sure a teacher. Maybe a counselor, something like that. Um, yeah. And his character, I think, has probably got the most development because we learn in season, or not season, but episode two, that... He actually has a, another family. His his ex wife and a son. Exactly. A teenage son. And, and that's then. developing a little bit. And his character overall, I think, has been developing way more than the other three. Have you ever noticed how in both episodes he's like on edge? Like there's not a single moment in either episode where he's like kind of calm or, you know what I mean? He's always like. Like he's on... Yeah, almost he, like he snorted a coffee. bunch of coke. He's on too much coffee. Got some coffee and he's like, ah, yeah, I can I can get that because 
He is very on edge in the episodes. Um, Even but I think he his character comes off as he's skeptical but believable. Like, he, you know, mm-hmm. everything's going on. And where is Madison Clark, his wife, is like, no, everything's going to be okay. No, we, we don't know. And he is like, you know, I've seen this in the church from episode one. Yeah. So, so I think he's on edge just because I think he knows that, you know, this isn't just... An isolated event. Mm -hmm. And then we got Frank. And I'm going to slaughter the last name. Delaney? Delaney? I just say Delane. So. And he's playing Nick Clark. He, um. He's obviously Madison's uh, teenage son. He's obviously a druggie kind of guy. Exactly. He's been in Harry Potter. Um, but his character, I also think, is developing a little bit uh, more than the two female lead characters, but not like the father. Um, but I still don't think I've gotten any feel for the characters to where I'm like um, attracted to any of them because mm-hmm. in, in TV series, I usually find a character that I really relate to and lately I haven't been able to do this. And it's like... For instance, American Horror Story, when that came out, man, I was really drawn in and attracted to you. Huh? Grasped by him. By, yeah, I just, well, the main character, well, not the main character, but the female character, their daughter in that series, I was drawn to her and I related with her. I don't relate with any of these characters and I don't feel they're believable to me. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's a lot of forced acting in this. And where situations don't really feel like they are real. But you were saying something about one of the other characters that hasn't got a lot of mention, but he's in a quite a bit of scenes. Um, uh, the character, is his name is uh, Toba, Tobias. Tobias. Yeah. Uh, played by Lincoln Castellanos. Uh, he's, uh, he's a kid from the first episode, he gets his, uh, knife taken away by Madison, and at first he thinks he's, like, some creepy kind of kid and wants to stab everybody, but in the second episode, you realize he's kind of a, um, kind of dorky, kind of goofy kind of guy. You know who I, you know who I started thinking about when we were talking about this character earlier is, you remember Ruben? You used to hang out with Ruben. You guys won't follow this, but me and Craig used to hang out with this guy that was a huge... Conspiracy. Conspiracy nut. And that's exactly what And that's Tobias. what Tobias is. Mm-hmm. And no one believes him. Yeah. <laughs> and he ends up being right and probably the most prepared out of anyone. Yeah, all the food and everything like that. Yeah, he's probably my favorite character so far. Hopefully he's not just in the first two episodes and he gets more, more yeah. involvement. Hopefully so. he can live on. Um you were saying something earlier about so who who do we got producing this one and okay so uh, Robert Kirkman created of course you know if you don't know who Robert Kirkman is then yeah uh, <laughs> and another, another guy named Dave Dave Erickson I don't know who he is personally then you got like the other uh, producers of The Walking Dead helping out like Gail Unheard and Greg Nicotero. Uh, it's funny, uh, Greg Nicotero, he's mostly known for, like, makeup and special effects in The mm-hmm. Walking Dead. But he's not doing that in Fear of the Walking Dead. He must be too busy with the... Uh, the Walking Dead. I'm sure they're shooting them at similar times. And... Yeah. Uh, and as for writing credits, uh, Robert Kirkman has probably got the most uh, most input on that. And then, funny enough, a couple... Uh, so uh, Robert Kirkman has wrote the majority of this storyline so far. That's what I got out. And this is like got to be his weakest stuff he's ever written. Then cash crop. Because I could see him, obviously the comics and stuff. You know. Yeah, he writes it very well. But in this, it's like he's written a lot of episodes of Walking Dead. Yeah, and and it's uh, just it's. I don't think he's doing very well in writing then on this. But who knows? I mean, he's got a lot on his plate. Maybe AMC just said, "Hey." Write this shit. <laughs> Write it now because we need something to fill the summer with. And that's what I think yeah. this is. Yeah, I don't think it was his idea. I think they they told him to get working on it because they wanted some extra cash flow in the summer. <laughs> what was actually... So when we watched episode two, what was your favorite 
scene or what did you like or take from that episode the most? Um, I definitely thought it was pretty cool how um, they had a couple of the homeless people who first got affected and then, uh, you know, the cops shot them and it's all over the news and everybody's freaking out, rioting and stuff like that. I'm like, cool. <laughs> um, I, I honestly think that, and this is an interesting thing that I'm thinking about, but so we have the Black Lives Matter group that's going on, and we got a lot of stuff in the media with police versus communities that mm -hmm. aren't, um, you know, that are stereotyped. You know, the black community is that, you know, yep. we got a lot of that stuff going on in the news, and I think the Fear of the Walking Dead is capitalizing on that <clears throat> because when I was watching that one protest scene from, you know, where they're like, hey, what the fuck? I got that from it, like, you know, the black protests and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think they are keeping um, very close, and this is pretty, you know, um, smart of the writing's team. They're watching current events, and they're putting them into yeah. the episode. I think that's cool. I think that would have happened anyway, you know, even if they weren't keeping up with current events, you know. Someone gets shot, and people are going to, you know... Makes yeah, I, I just find it, it's very, yeah. very relevant stuff that's going on in the media right now, and all of a sudden you see it in the film side. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I gotta say, I really enjoyed the fact that they had, like, you know, all these people that are getting infected at first, and we still don't know exactly where it's coming from. Yeah. But my favorite takeaway from the episode is just slowly seeing society crumble. I would just like to see it more and some of the BS character development less because I feel that we have too much nonsense in the character development that doesn't even develop the character and I'd like to see more of just let's film the society part of it like what's going on and I think they're slowly getting into that but I expected with season or episode two I expected to see a lot more and I just got a little it's like they're giving me a little every episode almost like I'm the druggy guy like I want to see this and like here have more come watch season or episode yeah. three you know it's where funny. funny you're talking about the society crumbling I'm like Eh, looks just like everyday Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, nothing's changed. Yeah, people get There's shot. There's smog everywhere. There's people get shot in Los Angeles. Nah, it'll start to pick up. Um, I'm worried that season episode, I'm worried about episode three, is uh, there is the entire episode is going to be them uh, locked up in that dude's shop. Remember that at the end? When they uh -huh, go, I do. They that go like that. a restaurant or something? I took away from it there was a barber shop, but I'm not certain. It's a shop of some sorts that it looks like they live in, in the back uh, or in the stairs. So. I'm worried that season, episode three is going to be just nothing but them locked up in there. And I'm like, ah. Oh. What I want to see from episode three and the remainder of this season is I want to see society crumble. I want to see everything happening. I almost don't even care about the characters. I want to see how this disease ravaged the world. And that's what I want to see. And that's one thing I really like about, like, um, some of some zombie movies do it. Like, the Dawn of the Dead and the remake of Dawn of the Dead, I think, did a very good job of showing the collapse of civilization. That's Especially Dawn of the Dead, the remake. Just the whole oh opening gosh. scene is epic. Mm -hmm. And I want to see that. And they can do that in even more detail, I think, because they have more time to do it. And that's what I want to see, and that's what I take, like, do mm -hmm. this for me. But My, my biggest hope for the show is they kind of uh, uh, give out more details and kind of tell you what the heck is going on. Obviously, in The Walking Dead, you just know some kind of virus. Mm -hmm. I hope that maybe somehow you learn a little bit more about the virus. And uh, Yeah, I, I, I would like that as well. Uh huh. Um, I think I probably saw that in like a couple like posters and advertisements and stuff like that. Like, find here's, out here's, what here's my only thing though is so, Kate, you remember The Walking Dead season one? 
where they go mm-hmm. to the CDC, mm-hmm. and he's already talking about the virus, but the CDC doesn't even really know. Like, That's one of my all-time favorite out. episodes. Of it's one of my favorite episodes, too, but I'm like, so how could you put Fear of the Walking Dead where we figure out where it comes from when in The Walking Dead, they pretty much say we have no idea, except everyone has it. Yeah. So, I mean, that could just be the one guy and the people in his CDC group, you know, maybe this, um, the other centers in Los Angeles, they might have a better explanation. Who, who knows? But, um, yeah, we'll see, I guess. Well, you know, I think we got a pretty good grasp of this episode. Um, you know, you guys leave your comments below, share this video. We'd love to discuss things with you. Exactly, just, um, you know. Let us know what you think. If you're not on par with me and Craig and you think it's great, tell us why you think it's great. Whatever, you know. Like I said in the last one, this is a community effort. We're talking about horror and keeping things real. So share this video. Like our Facebook page. Check us out on Instagram. um, And like this YouTube video and share it with as many people as you can. To help us out. And also, let's just get the community and the conversation going. That's what I really love about YouTube channels mm-hmm. is we get conversation going and we get different opinions. But anyways, I'm Marcus. I'm Craig. And we're the Horror Junkies of Utah. We'll see you next week to talk about Episode 3. You guys have a great night. Thanks for listening.